You are listening to an MLGA Network podcast. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again, the best damn liberty podcast that you've never heard of. Chuck and I will be your guides as we peer into the ridiculous reality that is our society and our government. Let's get to it. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again. I'm your host, Cam Harless, and my gosh, I've missed you guys. I haven't recorded or edited or published much of anything over the last couple of months. There are a couple of reasons for that. Primarily, probably the apathy caused by the coronavirus and the demotivation that comes from being a news show and the only news being the same thing over and over again and the coronavirus is just boring. It was just repeated talking points over and over again in different ways. Yeah, there was a lot to be pissed off about. I'm not going to wear that diaper on my face. I'm a 31-year-old man. I haven't had a curfew since I was, what, 18 years old? I wanted to record an episode during the coronavirus but I also didn't want to talk about the coronavirus. I had several of my documents set up with all the different news stories we could talk about. Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. Got just more boring stuff. I just feel like we've lived in the most boring-ass world for the past couple of months, and I couldn't do it. On top of that, I have these things called children. I have four of them for some reason. And I don't know if you know this about children, but their favorite game is scream and annoy daddy. Like, that's it. So, like, when I, when I get set up to do a recording with someone else, I always try to plan it for after they've gone to bed. So that you don't get random screams in the middle of me talking. I care very much about quality, especially audio quality, in this show and all our other shows. And so it's something that I, I really try to push. Because I don't want our network or my episodes or anyone else's episodes to sound like they came out of a out of a bargain bin out of Walmart. So I try my best to work around them. If you add in relatives showing up at your house right when you were supposed to record, or Mother's Day, any, any there were so many different things. A kid getting stitches right before the time I was supposed to record. You name it. I've just had bad luck. And I've been apathetic. I don't know if it's because I've been told I have to stay inside and so many of the things that I love have been closed or I've been told I can't have them because of the coronavirus. But I was ooh, pretty apathetic, feeling pretty sad on some days, mostly pissed on others. But I'm back and Chuck will be back and the show will be back. We are working on some stuff. Personally, I have been exploring red pills and where I want to go next with those. There were a couple of ideas that I've floated, uh, some of which I started researching and decided this isn't actually a red pill. Is it a good story? Yes. But I can't verify certain things. I can't look at this information and go, this is for sure what happened And this is what you should consider in your thinking. There's just not enough to go on on some of these. So I'm working through that. Um, I'm talking to Chuck about what we want to do, how we want to retool to coronavirus-proof ourselves for the future, to keep up the interest and the creativity and everything. So we're working on that. I'm hoping to find some creative solutions that make this more enjoyable for you as well as more enjoyable for me. So please, if you hear this, tell me. Go on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, choose your poison. And then tell me what you think is missing in the world of podcasting. And not just liberty podcasting. What are you missing when it comes... Maybe it is news stuff. Maybe it's pop culture stuff. I don't know. What do you want to hear when you're not hearing a red pill? Let me know. I'm very interested in your thoughts. Moving on from there, um, the world blew up the other day. 
a man named George Floyd in Minneapolis was murdered by the police very openly on video. Everyone saw it. It was disturbing to watch. I couldn't make it through the whole video because it hurt to watch. And so people are justifiably pissed off. People are killed by the police all the time, constantly. So I do feel like there is a conversation that needs to be had on this show. And I wanted to invite on uh, Thaddeus from Thank You For Your Servers and Kim from Lesbertarian to talk over this situation. I am a white boy, so I don't have the black experience, but I have friends that are open-minded and nuanced thinkers that do have that experience. And we are two sides of the same coin. So I'm excited to talk to them because I have my reactions. I have my thoughts. I have all of these emotions about what I've seen. I mean, for God's sake, I saw them tearing up my hometown on Twitter. I have thoughts about this. And I wanted to have someone on that could have that conversation with me that has seen the other side and that has rationally walked through their thoughts and said, you know what, where should I land? Not based on skin color, but based on logic, reason. I mean, emotions are not a bad thing to have. And you know what, your emotions do tell a lot about you, how you think, and what you are, what you do. But I wanted to have some people on that can talk about this and that we can come to an understanding together. Because let's be honest, the police brutality in America is bad. George Floyd is just the newest name on the list of people that have been murdered by the state. Eric Garner, Philando Castile, Daniel Shaver, Duncan Limp, all of these people were killed by policemen. And it's a conversation worth having. I think it could be a very good conversation. I think it could be very enlightening, not only to myself, but perhaps to you. So I'm excited to record that a little bit later this week, and I'll post it as soon as I can. Beyond that, I just wanted to address something that I keep seeing on Twitter and on Facebook. White people, black people, indigenous people, Asian people, everyone seems to be saying that the system is broken. I understand the idea behind this statement. However, I have to push back at the validity of it. Here's the deal. For something to be broken, it has to have been changed or harmed to the point that it can no longer fulfill its intended function. That is not what we're seeing. Yes, the system is corrupt. Yes, the system is filled with darkness and violence and horrible, monstrous things led by evil men. But the system that we live in is not broken. It's working as designed. It's working as intended. This system is the state. The state runs on violence and control. It runs on indoctrination, fear-mongering, and cowardice. It works on making people feel safe and stripping them of their freedoms at every turn. George Floyd, Duncan Limp, Daniel Shaver, Eric Garner, Philando Castile, all of these names that you know, or some that you don't, were killed because they were controlled by someone. George Floyd was killed because he gave a cashier a fake $20 bill. Do we know if he knew it was fake? No. Should that cashier have called the cops? No. The state was set up as a means to control. You can paint it with as many pretty words or pretty pictures as you would like, but the case is there are millions of people on this planet on either side of right or left that wish to control you. They want you to think like they think. They want you to do things that they do. They don't want you to disagree. They don't want you to dissent. As was shown with Ruby Ridge, if you walk away and try to live your own way, they will still hunt you down. The system isn't broken. It was flawed from the very beginning. The Constitution, despite all of its many praises that are, are sent its way every day, enabled what we have right now. 
government overreach, federal overreach, federal police, all of them have made it possible for cops to shoot or to put their knee on an unarmed man's neck and kill him and barely get a second look. Why did it take four days to put that cop in custody? The police are the sword of the state. They are the enforcers of unjust laws. They may be enforcers of laws that you think are just, but the question is, if it were you, do you think that you would be willing to kill someone because they didn't follow some tiny little law? Like having a fake 20 in your wallet, whether you knew it was fake or not. Do you really think men with guns need to rush down to take care of that? Because let me tell you, when you call the cops on someone, you better be damn well prepared, and you better know that you are pointing a gun at them. You need to understand and treat the police as if they are a weapon. If you've ever talked to anyone who's owned guns, loved guns, taken gun classes, you know that the first rule of holding a gun is that if you're going to pull it out, you have to go ahead and make peace with the concept that the thing you're pointing it at is going to die. You have to come to the conclusion that you are okay with and are sanctioning the death of whatever's on the other end of your gun. When you call the police, you hold the same responsibility. You are holding a, a, a loaded weapon at your neighbor. And any unintended consequences that happen after that point, you were a part of that problem. So think about that before you call the police. Think about what's acceptable to you when it comes to violence and killing. Because if you have higher standards than the police, which I sure hope you do, you're giving them too much free reign. All of this to say, the system is working as it is supposed to. Right now, it's, it doesn't seem to be prepared for what's going on right now. Donald Trump is, is upping the ante and activating National Guard units. As a libertarian, as an anarchist, I believe in private property. I believe that you have the right to life. And I, I mean, the words of Thomas Jefferson work really well. You have the right to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness. So if you're going to protest the state, protest the state. Don't point guns at your neighbors. Don't burn down your neighbors' businesses or homes. Don't destroy the lives of others because your real beef is with the state-sanctioned murder that goes on daily in this country. People talk a lot about systemic racism. And then they talk about how the system needs to be reformed. No, it doesn't. The system, as I've been trying to say, is based out of violence, fear, yes, some racism. But if you have an issue with systemic racism, you don't want to reform a system whose very foundation is injustice and is violence. The system needs to be brought down. The system doesn't work. And putting a band-aid on a broken system, how is that going to truly change anything? The state is not your friend. As you can see when they roll out the National Guard. To stop people who are in the midst of civil unrest because they saw themselves in George Floyd because they identified with his race, or with his situation, or his wealth status, whatever. They're tired of seeing people that, they, that look like them, and think like them, and maybe even are family members of them, be killed by the state and be treated as if they're expendable and their lives don't matter. That's a real problem. That's a real issue to take up with the government. It's a real reason to say that this government, this state, is illegitimate and need not exist anymore. I would love to hear what people think should happen after 
the riots, the protests, the looting, the property destruction, the monument destruction, the churches, the church that burned. After all this is over, I want to know what people want. Do they want to reform the system? What do they want? How do they want the government to respond to its own malfeasance? Because short of resetting the clock and getting rid of all of these structures that hurt everyone, white, black, Asian, I'm not going to name everybody, but everyone who lives in America is privy to this system. Everyone who lives in this country has been stolen from or threatened by the government. The state is not broken. It's working. They're not here to help you. The state is not God, and it's high time that we burn that idol down. The state cannot save you. The system at its very core is corrupt and filled with darkness and violence. Changes need to happen. But don't give the state an excuse that it's broken and need only have the right tyrants to make all things better. It's time to give up on that fiction. It's time to move on. It's time to recognize the inherent humanity in all people. It's time to recognize individuals as individuals. It's time to recognize that human rights exist and must be defended. But if you put your trust in the state to defend your rights, if you look back at the Constitution and point to those few words that say that you have rights, if you let the government believe that they gave you your rights, you have no rights at all. Your rights come to you and are yours because you're human, because you were born, because you're alive. They are not dependent on government. They didn't stem from government. They are yours, and we all have to protect our rights, rights to, to speak freely, rights to bear arms, rights to worship how you want to worship, the right to be left alone, the right to choose who you associate with, the right to voluntary and peaceful trade between people. The system, it can't be fixed, but we can. We can realign our thoughts. We can think logically and reasonably. We can think in terms of justice for the individual. The individual is the smallest minority on the planet. You matter, your life matters, our lives matter. But the fact is, to the government, there's not a single life that truly matters. There's not a life that they wouldn't snuff out if it disagreed or took actions to get away. The only person on this planet that can make you free is you. So make yourself free. When you begin to make yourself free, then <laughs> maybe it spreads. I'm not here to persuade everyone to think like me. I'm here to share my thoughts. And maybe, just maybe, if I could get one person to think, hey, I do have rights. I do deserve life and liberty. And I do deserve to be able to protect my family, protect my interests. If I get one person to say, I can make myself free, then it's worth it. It's well worth me sitting in front of my desk and yapping at this microphone all by myself. You are in charge of your destiny. You are in charge of making yourself free. Once you're there, once you've decided to be free, welcome to the club. We have the perfect group of people for you who all want the same thing. We'd be happy to have you join us. You guys have a good week. Stay safe. Stay strapped even in your own house right now. Protect yourself, protect your family, reject the state, and as always, stay sane. Yeah.